writing and produce a multiple venue small theater festival when I was 18. Uh, then I traveled the world where we were kids, taught English, and last year, Africa Travel Association brought me out to Senegal for the World Congress. So I was in the car and they had me on their Twitter, do YouTube videos and blog posts, and I realized I actually was doing social media all the time and there was a job for it. So I started doing social media consulting and now I've worked with small businesses, nonprofits, and individuals, and eventually I'll be working with some African countries. So that's my background. Um, so before we actually start the presentation, I just wanted to say thank you to Big Vision of you all. Thank you, Alex and Amy, and thank you to the show this Soaring Cafe. Uh, make sure you don't leave here without knowing a bit about what they do as well. So this is me. Um, I'm also a travel and events blogger. So the stuff I'm putting up these days are videos and blog posts from my tech press trip and RW Social is the name of my social media consulting company. So these are obviously, hopefully, you know the at sign is on Twitter. And of course, chronicwise.com, or any social comment, we can talk about whatever else in terms of whatever platforms you might be on later. Social media, that's what we're talking about, right? So the first thing um, I wanted to say is don't forget about the first word. It's social. That's all it is. Whatever relationships you're developing in person can be furthered online. Whatever relationships you can't have in person can be made online. So, uh, so remember that's what it's about. So when you talk to people, be yourself. Be whatever you're representing. If you're doing a film, if you're doing a certain project, don't make it so it then becomes something totally different. If you have a consistent social media presence in and of yourself, then whenever you have a project, people will care about it because they care about you. Whenever a brand uh, can personalize what they're doing, uh, they're better able to connect with people. So what I believe the foundation of social media is, from both a personal and a professional standpoint, is people becoming brands and brands becoming people. So know who you are, know what you do, know what sort of people you want to connect with as well. And social media is about creating and maintaining those relationships. So when you meet people, uh, if you're on Twitter, which I think you should be in, if you're not yet, hopefully by the end of this, you will be out because you signed up in the middle or because you will later on. Uh, we meet somebody, find them on Twitter, connect with them however you want to connect with them. LinkedIn is a great place to be. We'll go over that a little. And at the end, we'll see where everybody's level is and try to equalize that. But the point is, when we meet somebody, know how to keep that relationship going. It's part of networking, right? So when you're networking, part of that is social networking. So, man, if you're outside of the networking world, if you're not going to an event like this, you're not getting a business card. Well, you're sitting and you're at your computer and you've got a you know, Twitter on you got your homepage. Well, you follow whatever people you have in your address book, hopefully. And then, well, who do you want to be connecting with? What are you trying to do? So that's the whole point. You can be talking, and that's fine, um, but you need to know who you're trying to connect with. You can connect with people who you already have those relationships with, people who like your films. If you have a blog, it tells people they can follow you on Twitter, they can like you on Facebook. Well, then you can update them on what's going on. So you can do that output. You can also connect with people who, if there's a film festival you like, whatever else. So you need to know who you're trying to connect with because uh, if they're out on Twitter, that's one great place to be to find them to maintain those connections. I know for myself, I'd be able to have conversations with people via Twitter, but there's no way I could have had via email. That email would have gotten entirely lost. Do you, yes. have to, do you have to both have to follow each other in order to have their conversation? That's a good question. So one of the biggest differences fundamentally between Facebook and Twitter is on Twitter, you do not need to be truly followed to have a communication. So um, when you mention somebody, so you say the ad side of their name and say blah, 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 they don't need to be following you. So if there's a celebrity you want to be talking to, depending on who they are, if they interact, if they say something that's attention, you might be able to do that. If you're a director 
and then something would be perfect for a uh, movie. I wouldn't say that should be the first thing you say to them. You should have whatever conversation first, just like you wouldn't just go up to something on the street. Like, if you were in a movie, you want to start whatever relationship you can, but that's something you never need to follow. So you can have that conversation when you talk to them or whatever other stuff you're crush on, whatever you want, you want to reach out to. You don't need to make sure they're following you first before you can have that conversation. That's a very important thing to know. Now, if you are following each other, some people, companies, whatever else, follow people automatically, you can direct message. And direct messaging is a great way to have a quick personal conversation that you would be able to otherwise. So if somebody follows you, you'd be very happy wanted to have that relationship with them because now you do. Because now you have a, a group. And I know within my own communications, if somebody's direct messaging me or I'm direct messaging them, the turnaround time for this email is so much faster. So if you can make those connections, that's great. And if you can't, well, talk to them and try to engage with them. Now, some people, and some celebrities, some companies, aren't using Twitter the way I would recommend they go. So they don't engage with people. So look at their profile and take it personally. You see that all they do is just put out announcements of what they're doing. If they're not engaging with anybody, they're not going to engage with you. So you need to be aware of that. Is that the question? So when you're in social media, knowing who you want to connect to, I mean, this is part of just your strategy and analysis, just a networking strategy. Who are the people you want to be connecting to the person? Who are the people you want to be connecting to online? Knowing that will make it so you know what you're doing and you have a goal. Now, if you don't have a goal, you can just talk. Now, when I say just talk, I'm not saying just broadcast. If you've got people who you've got, uh, who you're going to follow, who are going to follow you, and you see something interesting, you can react to it. Twitter, by nature, is about communication. It's not about broadcast. Facebook, you can do a lot more, which is kind of saying what's going on with you, updating things, letting people know this is what the project's going, what are you going to be doing. Um, whereas Twitter, if you're not engaging, people won't care. It just is not how it works. So when I say chatter, you can just talk to people without a role. That's great for developing and maintaining relationships. But if you know who you're reaching out to, you reach out to the people that's going to know. So chatter is not always bad. As long as it's not in what communication is what it is, being social, not just blabbing, blabbing, blabbing things about yourself. That's this is how it relates to real life. And it always does. You go somewhere and you just talk to people and you talk to people and you never listen and you never respond, you're not going to dwell in the market. And that's what Twitter is. It's like it's a very large market. As I said, Facebook, Twitter, is a big problem. But it's actually a positive So if you're going to talk to people, it's not just Twitter, there's Facebook, etc., you need to speak that language. And what I mean by that, I mean that everywhere you are in social media, a different language. Do not write a sentence on the end. How many of you guys have an active Twitter presence? An active Twitter presence? Twitter profile, Twitter handle that you write for someone? Okay. So, and are you guys also on Facebook? Do you write the same things on Twitter as you do on Facebook? No. And do you write them the same way? Hopefully you don't, because, I mean, you can't. Like, I mean, the reality of it is you have a limited amount of characters on Twitter. Facebook, I don't care whether you hit whatever the limited amount of characters is on Twitter is on. But I mean, inherently, there is a difference. So you have to speak differently. So that, that's the point there. So, yes? Thank you. Yes. That was exactly actually where I was going. And I ended up not going there. Don't do it. That's the whole point. I mean, if you are doing, if, it sounds like a great time saver to forward your Facebook posts to your Twitter or forward your tweets to Facebook. From experience, I can tell you, if somebody's on Facebook and they see hashtag something, pound sign something, they get mad with it. They get confused. Like, you, there are many people who do not know what that means. So if you are losing people, you're losing connections by like not speaking the language. Um, so that's why not to go for one way or the other. Then going to, to face from Facebook to Twitter about the character on there. If somebody sees uh, a status of it, whatever else they're feeding over, and it's got ellipses, and the thought is incomplete, well, nobody's going to care, or they're going to be dissuaded from following you because you're not engaging. You can engage on each social media platform. Uh, or is it? That's really what I would say. And that might require 
are you going to live? How much are you going to do on each? Because everybody's got limited time. But you have to, because there's no shortcut with that. I there are people who try hard to go to and I just don't see it. It's a different language. I mean, you wouldn't go up to somebody in Portugal and speak Spanish to them unless you really had to. You know, I mean, you're trying to communicate. You would speak, you don't try to find a language, try to get out of So I really, really recommend it. Um, so lots of different ways to interact with people online. Um, podcasting, I probably won't talk much about because that's sort of its own little world and I don't know if any of you really care. Um, Twitter, I do a lot of them. Uh, I help on the biggest uh, travel chat on Twitter and I will definitely talk to you in a little bit about their travel chat or what the Twitter chat is. Uh, that's a really important thing for you to be able to develop. Communities on, on Twitter. Blogging, how uh, many of you have your own blogs? So, um, what I would say about blogging is there are a lot of misconceptions about what blogging is or should be. There are people who think blogging is just uh, a teenage or hiring. And uh, that's partially because of in some ways how uh, how our blogs are. Blogs and what's the sign that was going to be? Uh, the diary one. <laughs> there was there was diary site. That was big. Live journal. Live journal. Thank you. Yeah, live journal was was one of the big uh, perk things on the blogging. So people saw that. I mean, obviously now with Huffington Post and every news organization has a blog, so it's not what it used to be. Like that. Um, the biggest thing about blogging, the reason I was telling you to have a blog, um, or two things. One, you do it for free. So, uh, the cost is right. Now, we'll talk a little bit about uh, why you would or wouldn't do it for free and how you would do it if you weren't. But um, I was talking to Vicky before, and the biggest thing about blogging to me is never reading content. So, it's always there. Search engines people who are using search engines, which is why the search engines exist in my head. And it feeds to do whatever you're doing. Now, I would also say don't feed from your blog directly when you post stuff, don't directly do it, shape however you're saying it. But all that content that's there stays there. A tweet will stay there to some extent, but it'll get buried and buried deep. Same thing with Facebook posts. A blog post, you can search and you pull it out as necessary. When I'm doing uh, travel talk on Twitter, uh, something will come up about whatever destination in Mexico, let's say. Well, I've got a blog post on it, so I put a thing up. So if you're having a conversation with somebody, if you put a tweet up, a Facebook post, it's on the point, well, there's nothing to say, but we say it. If you have a blog post where you explain whatever it is, um, you can then have it there. Now, wherever you're at, I would recommend becoming an expert on whatever you do. The writer, the director, have tips that are actually useful. Be part of the conversation and start a conversation. Um, and a blog is a good way to do that. So, and then you can respond on other people's blogs, and depending on how, how cool it is, you make a comment saying, oh, I wrote about this, etc. So, go with that if we're thinking about Facebook. Well, we were talking about Facebook six months ago, we would have talked about something very different. Uh, 
LinkedIn is also an important thing to, to know. We'll go with that in a sec. Google Plus sucks. I hate Google Plus. It's a big waste of time. And I will show you a name of it as to why. Tumblr? I don't really use it. So we're going to gloss over that pretty quickly. And so I'm going to say, That's a very good question. So the question was, what is the difference between Tumblr and blogging? Um, there isn't really. I mean, Tumblr is in some ways a format to blog in. It also functions more like social media than some other things do. The biggest difference I would say between Tumblr and just straight blogging is a lot of times Tumblr is you recycling other people's content. So you finding what like and reblogging it is the term on Tumblr. So people will have a Tumblr and they might have never actually posted things themselves. So they're finding things they like and um, re-blogging it, and, and that's how it works. So it's, it's sharing and it's a lot more social and just kind of a straight blog. It's a blog, you know, comments, and that's it. Tumblr is somewhere between blogging and what things just like this. Yeah. Um, okay, so that's kind of the overview. So let's go into a little bit. Um, are there any do you guys know like basic Twitter terms or not? No? Okay, so we'll go over it quickly. Uh, follower and following, that's how you interact with somebody. Facebook, if you have a profile, if you have your own thing, what you're doing is you're friending somebody, you're unfriending somebody, etc. Twitter, you have followers, you follow people. A hashtag is that pound sign. So people have used this a lot, that's kind of a different thing as to how you use a hashtag, but know that there are ways to use them and not use them. You've got a, 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 a tweet up, and every single word has a pound sign in front of it, you're abusing a hashtag. So don't be very selective. I would say three maximum, and usually that'd be one in the middle and two in the end. We can talk about that later as necessary. Retweet, partake, um, is there are two ways you can do it on Twitter. So what you're doing is you're taking something that somebody else said and you are putting it within your own Twitter timeline, basically, on newspaper or feed. So um, one way is just, just to totally retweet. So within Twitter, there's a lot of things that says retweet, and you click it, and then it says retweet by, and then it just looks like it does. The other way is to modify it and then write something in the front, or you have a comment to it, and then you're having a conversation. So sometimes you have nothing to say to whatever somebody else is You just share it like this. Sometimes you uh, want to say something. Yeah. Okay. So mention, yes, ma'am. Um, when you're retweeting someone and you're sort of quoting that tweet and either and putting a comment on it, should you be putting that comment ahead of what you're retweeting or after it? Very good question. Now, for whatever reason, it went over my head for months uh, that when we were talking about, uh, or do you need someone to follow you to have a conversation? Well, you can have those conversations, but the only way another user will see those conversations is just ask on a name, blah, 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 ask on a name, what is it they're following, blah, blah, blah. Because otherwise, think about it, if you're following Delta and somebody's complaining to them and going back and forth, that it fell off your feet. So you don't see it if it starts with that. So there's two ways around that. One is to leave with whatever comments there are. Because Twitter then will see that it's just words, and then they'll fill up. That's sort of a normal thing with your feet. The other way is um, to add a period in front of the person's name. So sometimes uh, if you want to say something to somebody, you don't want to say anything else, you want to make sure it goes out to everybody, you got a period. So I would say start off with whatever it is, um, because that's just the help to Twitter loves to ask. To having a letter of comment, kind of briefly, and um, then an RT name, etc. So does that make sense to everybody? So start when you're replying, when you're responding to somebody, um, put whatever you're responding to at the beginning. Because otherwise, also, I mean, just think about 
Dragon Club on Twitter, hashtag TTOT. So we are now it is 5.30 a.m. and p.m. British, I'm oh, sorry, um, Eastern. 5.30 a.m. and p.m. Eastern. And the way it works for us and the way it works for a lot of people is uh, it's broken down with questions. So if you ever see somebody has like Q1 or A1 that you're following, it's because they're doing something like this. So we do five questions, one every 10 minutes, and it goes out to everybody with the hashtag. So everybody knows what the questions are and then responds with the hashtag. So why is this important? Well, Twitter is a lot of people just kind of talking and sometimes talking to each other, sometimes not talking to anybody. So this is a time that's set aside where you're focused on talking to people within this chat. So for me, the reason this is important is you get to be part of the community and you find and engage with people in this sort of dedicated way. So whatever you might be interested in, there are different Twitter events, Twitter chats for it. And if there isn't, well, you have an opportunity then. And uh, if you can start your own on whatever topic, whatever niche thing, if you can get people involved in it, well, then you become the leader of your own community, and that's 